Good morning, ASEAN. Freshen up your world, your thought, your idea with us every weekday from 7:30 to 8 a.m. I'm Patsu Rangde Cha Putharang Si, and I'm also here with you, Nirasha Malaysaklumia. For today, let's start our new with the ASEAN Summit. Yes, it's coming right up tomorrow. That's yeah. right, and two of our anchors, which is um, Kun Jarawikitisin and Kun Onrawitang Misang, uh, are now, flying they're not, there. Yes. They're right now, now in Bandar Seri Begawan. Yes, yeah, that's right. So stay tuned for um, possible for a possible um, a, a phone interview, interview yes, from with Brunei us business with us in business report. But now let's update for the schedule as the annual summit of the Association of Southeast Asian Nations or ASEAN will be held between Wednesday and Thursday in Brunei's capital of Bandar Seri Begawan. The 10 nation bloc is scrambling to beat a deadline to transform the, strict, the strikingly diverse region of 600 million people into a European Union like community by the end of 2015. Three cells over there, the South China Sea issues will be raised as the Southeast Asian leaders are expected to press China to agree to start negotiations on a new pact aimed at thwarting a major clash in one of the world's busiest waterways. Concern over North Korea's latest threats is also expected to gain attention over economic issues in the summit as well. A draft statement to be issued after the summit would reaffirm the ASEAN leaders' commitments to ensure the peaceful resolution to South China Sea conflicts in accordance with international law without resorting to the threat or use of force. They would call for the early adoption of a code of conduct in the South China Sea referring to a legally binding pact ASEAN would like to forge with China to replace a 2002 non-aggression accord that has failed to stop territorial skirmishes. China, Taiwan and ASEAN members Brunei, Malaysia, the Philippines and Vietnam have overlapping claims across the South China Sea, which Beijing claims it in claim in its entirely. The Philippines and Vietnam in particular have been at odds with China over the region in recent years with diplomatic squabbles erupting over oil and gas exploration and fishing rights. Cambodia's Foreign Minister Ho Nam Hong returned after a trip which he commented as a grueling battle, the legal battle with Thailand for the last four days. So, of course, he said that Thailand agreed that Pro Wihei Temple belongs to Cambodia, but he said that the problem is about the vicinity surrounding around Pro Wihei Temple, and Cambodia called for the Hague's International Court of Justice for interpretation of the verdict in 1962. So he added that there was no argument over the meaning of the verdict, but they they still have an argument since then. So after Thailand had unilaterally and illegally installed wire fences not far from the front of Pra Wihei Temple in June of that same year. So Hornam Hong commented that Thailand took many maps to present, such as maps of water divisions, but it was rejected by the court. He said that. So Hornam Hong insisted that while confronting the ICJ, Thailand had shown their naughty behavior by showing again and again the map of the water div division and they accused Cambodia without any merit. So Cambodia's Prime Minister Hun Sen and Thailand's Prime Minister Ying Lakshinawat said the two nations would be silent and work cooperatively following whatever the court's decision may be. So lastly, he Hornam Hong said that there have been no clear date over when the interpretation of the verdict would be given, but he thought it would be made at the end of this year. Now let's shift our attention to Vietnam for the bird flu watch as the poultry breeders in the Mekong Delta are nervously on the watch of any possible of the spread of avian flu or H5N9. Even though the virus has not yet been found in swallow bread in the Delta local authorities began to prepare for preventive measures after their counterparts in the south central province of Ninh Thuan where it's declared an epidemic and kill all the infected birds. The declarations made Ninh Thuan the first province in Vietnam to officially acknowledge a bird flu outbreak among swallows being raised for the nest. The Minh Duc, um, director of Long An province, Department of Agriculture and Rural Development say that after residents in the province's Tan Thong district tested positive for avian flu and underwent treatment, more than 4,000 local birds were vaccinated and many were killed. 
He said, however, even swallows raised in Long An had not tested positive for the virus. Provincial authorities asked owners to remove them from residential areas, and he added that the province asked the administration of five districts, including the border near Cambodia, to vaccinate their poultry after avian flu was discovered in the neighboring country. Poultry brought in through the borders should be carefully inspected. And the coastal province of Kiangyang, which has the most swallows breeders in the delta with hundreds of farms, is also preparing to face a potential avian flu epidemic. The province's leaders plan to remove all urban swallow farms from residential areas in addition to taking all the preventive measures. In the delta's Baklieu province, the veterinary division tested three swallows and found that none carried the virus. Local health and agricultural officials have instructed local farmers on preventive measures. And Tran Thi Thai, deputy chairwoman of Dong Thap Province People's Committee, has urged the veterinary sector and local authorities to increase poultry vaccinations and tighten management on poultry slaughtering and trading, especially in areas near Cambodia. The world's famous mobile operators are included in the list of 22 companies importing the second phase of pre-qualification application to invest in Myanmar's local communication services. So according to the Midsummer report, Vodafone and China mobile companies, which are the world's largest mobile operators, jointly imported their mobile phones and its related materials as an operator. So moreover, other famous mobile operators, namely Digicel, South Africa-based MTN Consortium, Norway-based Telenor, and Malaysia-based Asiata Group Berhad, also imported mobile phone-related equipments. According to Miao Min Yang from Redlink Communication Company in Myanmar, he said that they are jointly carrying out mobile WiMAX technical sectors with SK Telecom. So this implies to Kunir Shah a, an early joint collaboration between Myanmar's local telecommunications mm -hmm. sector and Singapore's. So they will provide communication services like international communication companies if they get a chance of being an operator. So now the local technical companies like, of course, Redlink Communication, KBZ and Myanmar Telephone Company Limited, or MTEL, are carrying out their technical services in cooperation with foreign technical companies like South Korea-based SK Telecom and Singapore-based Singtel. Mm -hmm. And for today, Myanmar Focus Daily, we're going to have a look at the live of Myanmar Tycoon series with Kun Arawi Tang Misan. For this very first episode of Myanmar Tycoons in Economic Transition series, we will meet with a man who is behind many development projects in the country. He himself has 92 businesses, ranging from property developer to tourism businesses, including the one behind me. He is Dr. Kin Chui from Segaba Company Limited. We cannot deny that creating business connection with local business people is one of the most important steps in doing business abroad. Many foreign investors who expressed an interest in investing in Myanmar have met this influential Myanmar business leader. In this first episode, we will get to know more about his life before becoming a successful tycoon. เราจะเอาเช่าในคนในเราหมาเราไม่มาย่าบ่าเลยย่าบ่าได้ค่ะเจ้าเจ้าเนาะอมีอยู่ตัวเปียตัวเลยเปียตัวเลยค่ะเจ
after coming back from Singapore and America in 1990, Kinchoi founded Zegaba Company. His company had won many construction projects, such as building the pavilions for the Union Day celebration and other national level events, building Sedona Hotel, the Marina Square near India Lake, and Garden City in Mingaladon Township. He was involved in the development of the Angkor Industrial Zone, and he was the pioneer in Myanmar tourism businesses since 20 years ago. Every day, hundreds of tourists make the reservation in advance in order to enjoy international buffet and watch Myanmar traditional show here at Garaway Palace. The Garaway Palace the restaurant has been with the Yangon for around 40 years, and this is one of the businesses of our guests today. Apart from construction business, he is also a chairman of Myanmar Tourism Association and Myanmar Thailand Friendship Association. In 2003, he was elected to be a member of parliament under the ruling Union Solidarity and Development Party, in which President Ding Seng is the head of the party. Uh, ပြည်မာထောက်နေရရှိတယ်အဲ့လိုသတ်မှတ်လိုက်တဲ့အတွက်အခုရှိရနဲ့ However, before reaching the pinnacle, he has overcome various obstacles such as the nationalization of businesses and economic sanctions. More details in the next episode of Myanmar Focus Daily with Andrei Tang Misang. Isn't it happy Kunir Shah to still enjoy eating and losing weight? Yes, but of course, don't forget to do exercise as well. Yes, in Well Within after the break.